continue the study of the maximum and minimum values of a function, which are the extreme values of a function. In the previous video, we have seen how to find the maximum and minimum values of a function that has only one variable, but in this video, we are dealing with a function that has two variables, x and y. These are our two dependent variables. So we want to find what are the coordinates that gives us the maximum and minimum values of this point. Because here we are dealing with two different variables, x and y, then we are going to need the knowledge of the partial derivatives in order to find the maximum and minimum and then we are going to follow some steps. So there are some basic notations that I use in order to help us to solve such kind of problem when we have two variables. The first thing to know is that the partial derivative of the given function with respect to x is going to be denoted as p, with respect to y is q, the second derivative of this function with respect to x is going to be denoted as r, the second derivative with respect to y as t, and the derivative of this function with respect to x and then respect to y is going to be denoted as s. So then what we do, we have to solve the p and the q which are the partial derivatives, which are the initial partial derivatives, and then we equate them to zero. Then we are going to solve them in order to find the values of x or y that one of them is going to give us or both are going to give us. And then we are going to take these values and are going to replace in the other equation so that we get the coordinates of these points. And then we are going to use these points and then check if the point that we have found they obey this relationship. If the value of r into t is greater than the value of s squared as per our notations here that if this condition is satisfied, then the next thing that we have to do is to check for the given point if r is less than 0, t is less than 0. In this case, if we find something like this, then it means that we have reached the maximum point of a function and if r is greater than 0, we have reached the minimum point of that function. We can check with t or with r, but mostly we check with r. So let us solve this example. So the first thing that we have to do when we're given this is to find the partial derivative of this function with respect to x, which is going to be our p. So df by dx is our p. And this is a case of a power rule, and we have a playlist about it. So what we're going to have now, we're going to have 3x squared. And then we have to find the derivative, partial derivative, with respect to y. This is called q as per our notations. This is just application of the power rule. The next thing we have to do is we have to equate this p to 0 and this q also to 0. So we're going to have here 3x squared plus 3y squared minus 6x is equal to 0. This is our p and here 6xy minus 6y is also equal to 0. This is our q. This is our p. So next thing we have to do now is to try to solve this to find x and y. So it seems that it's easy if we start from this point but we can also start from this point. So I'm going to call this side as p and this point as q. So we can start from this point. We can see that we have here multiples of 3. So 3 is common in all these terms here. So we have 3 as common to the x square plus the y square minus 2x in this is all equal to 0. Now we can proceed with this because we have two variables here. Now we come to this one. In this one 6y, 6y is common in this and this term. So we know that 6y is common to x minus 1 and equal to 0. So this tells us that, that 6x is equal to 0 or x minus 1 is equal to 0. So y is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1. Now we are going to take these values and replace in this function. Now for the first case, we are taking here 4, we are going to take y equals to 0. We are taking y now equal to 0. When y is equal to 0, what you're going to have here is 3x, 3x squared. This becomes, uh, this becomes 0 here, so we're multiplying this distribution. So we're going to have 3x squared minus 6x is equal to 0. So this is a quadratic equation that we have found over here. And then we can see that something is common here, which means that these are all multiples of 3. So we're going to have here 3x 
is equal to x minus 2 equals to 0. So it means as 3x is equal to 0 or x minus 2 is equal to 0. Hence x is equal to 0 because this comes in and divides. And then here x is equal to 2. So with this what you know is that we have now two points. We have a point in which x is 0 and y is 0 and we have another point when x is 2 and y is 0. This value of y is the value of y that we have used to replace here. Then we go for the next step. 4 x is equal to 1 which is this one here. Now we're going to replace this in this equation. So what we're going to have now is 3 into 1 plus y squared minus 2 is equal to 0. Then we're going to have here 3 plus 3y squared minus 6 is equal to 0 as you can find. Then as you can find over here this comes here becomes 6 then this becomes 6 minus 3 becomes 3 then this comes here big divides then we're going to have 2 and then we're going to have uh, we're going to have 1 and then we're going to have this becoming y squared is equal to 1 and hence we can say that y is equal to plus or minus 1. Now, for this case, when x is equal to 1, we have two values of y. We have, uh, we have y1 and minus 1. Now, this is another coordinate. We are going to have here x is 1 and y is 1. And we have another point in which x is 1 and y is minus 1. Now, the third thing that you have to do, third step, that we have to do now is that we have to find the second derivatives of this function we have to find the values of t r and s so that we can confirm with that formula to check the condition so the next thing that we have to do is to find what is the value of of r and the values of t now the value of r r is the second derivative of this function with respect to x now this is the function that was, was was differentiated with respect to x now i'm going to differentiate this function again respect to x again this is going to be power row and then from this you're going to have 6x and then here you're going to have minus 6 so our r is going to be 6x minus 6 now we have our r the next thing that you have to find is our s our s is the mixed derivatives the derivative of this function with respect to x first and then with respect to y so this is the function with respect to x then we differentiate this function with respect to y then this comes here we're going to have here 6y and then we have no more y here so then we're going to have here 6y then the next thing that you have to find is the value of t and t is the second derivative of this function with respect to to y derivative of which function of this function here q with respect to y and as you can see this is going to give us because this power is 1 then we're going to have 6x minus 6 now we have r t and s the next thing that we have to do is to check if which of these points obey this relationship obey this condition this is the fourth we have this condition rt should be greater than s square now we're going to test first of all to the point zero zero now in this point zero zero we have our value of r which is six so we have six into zero is going to be zero then our r is going to become minus six minus six is the value of r into our value of t is also going to be minus 6 this should be greater or equal to now we come to the value of x and we place 0 in the place of y and as we place 0 in the place of y we're going to have 0 here so this is going to give us 36 is greater than 0 so this point should be taken into account this point should be taken into account the next point we're going to try is the point 2 and 0 then again the same condition we're going to apply so we are going to see if we take in this point 
we take um, x and replace here we're going to have 12 minus 6 so we're going to have 6 6 is our value of r and 6 is going to be also a value of t because we are putting here 2 which is the value of x and again here we're going to have 0 because of this 0 so it becomes 0 so again 36 is greater than 0 so this point also satisfies our condition which is this one then the next point that we have is the point 1 and 1 so in this point again what you do is we have to replace whenever we have wherever we have uh, x with 1 and whatever we have y with 1 so we're going to have here this is going to be 6 minus 6 is 0 and for t as well 0 this is going to be greater than we have to put 0 here so we're going to have here 6 which is going to be this value here and this is going to be 6 squared so we're going to have here 0 is greater than 6 squared and this is false so this point should not be regarded then we go for our last point which is the point 1 and minus 1 and again in this point what you're going to have I'm going to write it here in this point what you're going to have is again 0 0 because uh, this is our r this is our t is going to be greater than we're going to put here minus 1 so we're going to have minus 6 raised, raised to 2 which is going to give us 36 so again this point also does not this condition is not fulfilled this point here also is not working for us so we have two possible points this point here and this point now with this information the next thing that we have to do is to check for the value of r for each point so now we are starting we can see this at the point 0 0 which is this point in which the condition was fulfilled we are going to check what is the value of r and in this case the value of r is minus 6 so here r is equal to minus 6 minus 6 is less than 0 if minus 6 is less than 0 if r is less than 0 it means that we have a maximum point this is our maximum now the next point you can write it here at the point 2 0 we're going to check the value of r in this point here r is 6 and 6 is a positive number therefore we have a minimum we have a minimum and hence we have found the maximum and minimum of this function